So you wake up, you come home from work, you come home from school, you're ready to hop onto multiverses. You get in there, do a couple of your PVE daily missions in the rift, nothing too crazy. Then you hop into PVP, whether you want to become the next pro multiverses champion or you just want to complete your dailies. You eventually run into something so diabolical, so insane, so brutal. Have you ever ran into something like this? Or better yet, have you ran into something like this? Do you know what they have in common? I'm gonna give you three seconds to figure it out. No, I'm waiting. One, two, three. And they ain't got nothing in common because one is a combo and the other is a spammer. You want to identify the difference between the two because one is way easier to deal with. When you're dealing with something like a combo, the easiest way to avoid being in a combo is to avoid the setup. That is the difference between someone who is spamming something and someone who is doing a combo. There is a setup to a combo and in order for that to happen, the player needs to have that set up. Now you might be wondering, Poppin, why are you sharing that useless information to me? I came here to deal with spammers. Well, because you know, I identifying if it's a spammer or not is one of the most important parts of beating a spammer. In multiverses, there are multiple types of spammers, but I'm gonna go over them all so you can figure out how to beat each and every one and never have to struggle against them again. There is nothing worse losing to someone you know you're better than because they are spamming. The first spammer we're gonna talk about because it's the easiest spammer to beat is the mindless spammer. I call these the mindless spammers because they spam the same thing over and over again without really any thought process. It just works. Now you might be thinking popping that stupid, I already know, don't get hit. But listen, let me help you. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples on how to deal with this. Again, first, avoid the attack. Jump over it, whatever. Most attacks, if they are spammed, you can usually figure out exactly what it's gonna do and how to avoid it. If you're doing it in 2v2s, well, it's a little bit different because, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening. But the same things can be applied to all of these. The next thing is just dodge. Especially if the move makes the character travel, you can just dodge and then just, you know, get right behind them and hit them. It's that easy. Another thing, and I don't usually see this especially on characters that actually have this is super armor all you need to do is time it and you can use super armor as a way to avoid all of this altogether again the mindless spammer are ones that are easier to beat because they typically don't have a game plan usually once you foil their attempt they break down and have no other way to play the game the mindless spammers usually only rely on that move and once that move is gone you just have a free match. Now you're probably like, okay, Poppin, that was easy. I understand what you got next. Well, now we have the mindful spammer. The mindful spammers typically have a game plan and their game plan usually revolves around hitting one ability and then having a follow-up or if it does end up missing, they already know how to react and punish you that way. These spammers typically still follow a pattern, but it's a little bit harder to deal with because they actually know how to react to what you're doing. Now, this one's not as simple as jumping over or dodging or anything like that. In order to be a mindful spammer, you actually have to be mindful yourself. Understand the pattern of the player, understand what they're trying to do. I do have a video coming out in the future on how to read opponents. Make sure you subscribe that way you're notified. Doing stuff like this will be super easy to beat these type of players. So if you know a player always Always jumps and then does an ability understand that they will jump and do the ability now what if they follow up with something else well understand that they jump do the ability follow up with something else and keep paying attention to what they do eventually they're not gonna have anything left they're gonna be just like the mindless spammers and once you break down their play they have nothing left and you have another free match sometimes the mindful spammers can be a handful because we're so focused on what we're doing with our character but if you start focusing on what they're doing with their character and you learn to react these players are actually extremely easy to beat the next type of spammer that we have is the button masher now because multiverses is so beginner friendly there's a lot of characters in this game Game that reward players for button mashing. A few examples are Batman, Harley Quinn, Finn, Morty. I mean, the list can kind of go on, but you understand the point. There's some characters that are rewarded for just pressing buttons, and it's very hard to deal with it because they also seem to have quick recovery or they seem to just always have another thing up their sleeve every single time you go to do something. Now, there are a few ways to beat button mashers. The first way, especially if you're an experienced player, is to just wait for an opening. Usually, a lot of these button mashers will press a lot of buttons, but they'll eventually get to a button that's very easy to punish. And so all you're doing is waiting for that moment to punish it, and you'll end up getting them, especially if you understand the ranges of both characters. The second way, and this is a bit easier is just zoning them out. If your character has a lot of range or maybe projectiles or something that can really reach out, usually this is a great way to stop button mashers. Button mashers typically don't have a plan when they button mash. They just want to make sure something connects and then just keeps the pressure on. 
but they don't really have a great way to approach. The third thing you can do, and I rarely see this happen, is you can use your dash attack. Dash attacks are a great way to get into the zone of someone who is just button mashing. You might trade. Most of the time you won't, you'll come out on top of the dash, but sometimes you'll both hit each other because again, they're button mashing. But what this will do is reset both of you guys to neutral. You'll like flinch and fall backwards and then they will fall backwards. This means you guys are both on an even playing field and you can try to approach them from there. This is a great way to get in on them and you punish them every single time. Remember, it is not about getting the highest damage combos and stuff in fighting games like this. Sometimes you wanna just take little by little. A dash attack might be worth 10 damage, but imagine if you keep doing that. They're gonna get punished really hard or they're just gonna stop button mashing altogether and then they just lost the match because they have no clue how to play. The last thing again is just super armor. Not many people use super armor find out if your character has super armor and then just use that it's a great way to stop button mashers now we're getting into the more complicated territory of spammers I call this spammer the one two three spammer these types of players usually have a three-step process they hit you hit you into an aerial move these are the players that try to get you in the air as much as possible and then just kind of hit you up there repeatedly these spammers can be difficult to deal with these type of spammers aren't really poor players they are more or less just players that like to do the same thing over and over because it works but again if you shut down their play Plan, they don't know how to play the game. Now, now there's a few ways to deal with something like this. The first way is spot dodge. A lot of players in this game typically dash in directions, but don't forget you can dodge in place so that you can react faster and they're closer to you. Also, this could lead into a parry. Sometimes you'll accidentally parry because you are anticipating that attack to come hit you. Once again, another thing you can do is zone. A lot of these players that have these one, two, three combos have a pattern. They do the same thing over and over and over again, which means they will run into you almost the exact same every single time. Use something to keep them at bay or use something to interrupt them. When we're dealing with the one, two, three spammers, we're dealing with someone that has a habit. We're dealing with someone that has a pattern. If you interrupt their plan, they usually don't know how to continue it and they'll go right back to step one. Do you understand why I call it the one, two, three spammer? If you interrupt them between any of their steps, they have to then revert back to one and they will never be able to do what they wanna do if you can continue to interrupt that process. Last but not least, once again, we have super armor. If your character has super armor, abuse it. I do want to mention some characters actually have super armor, but it's not super armor. It's really weird. Taz's spin kind of is a super armor move. Usually what's going to happen is he's going to come out on top. You can't really hit him or you guys are both going to hit each other. But regardless, that's a great move to use because most of the time you will end up on top and the person just can't even run you down at that point. If your character has a panic button, abuse the crap out of it. Now the most difficult type of spammer, and some of you guys might not even call it spamming. I call it spamming, I don't care what you say. Some might not call it spamming, but in my opinion, it is. These are gonna be called stun lockers. So because once again, multiverses is very beginner friendly, a lot of what characters can do is very easy. Stun lockers typically have a way to keep hitting you and because you are stun locked, you can't dodge. So this means essentially you're taking a lot of free damage because you can't dodge out. Unless you're an experienced player, usually when you're playing fighting games and you're stun locked, what is your first instinct? to button mash, get me out of here, I'm locked up, what do I do, I can't get out. That is one of the reasons why stun lockers are so strong. Not only because it's very easy to do, but also because you're stun locked, you're spamming buttons, but those buttons won't work because you're stun locked. The only way to get out of stun locks is going to be directional influence. Now I spoke on this a little bit in another video, but basically what directional influence is, is a way to move your character out of combos or stun locks like this one. Usually when people stun lock, they have a pattern. They'll go left, right, left, right, or they go left, 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 or right, 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 whatever. You figure out which way they're going in directional influence in the opposite way. This will cause you to get out of their stun lock. If you do it fast enough, you won't even be locked because you'll get out before they started it. Unfortunately, right now, there's no easy way to deal with this other than not being caught, but because it's so easy to pull off it's easy to get caught it's not like oh you have to be hit once and then do this that no all they need to do is jump attack you or up tilt you and you're in that lock so until player first games decides to do anything about these stun lock type characters your best bet is directional influence i also want to give a huge shout out to cloudy crow for helping me record this not only have they been watching me from years ago but they also have been supporting me as a member of the channel if you enjoy anime reactions or discussing anything anime that is the place to go. Their link will be in the description below. I also want to add if you're looking for a 2v2 partner or if you're looking for people to play Rift mode with to complete some of these missions, join my Discord and you might find someone to play with. Until next time, you know what I always say. Thank you guys for doing what? Popping often. We're locked.